how how can like the the current generation or folks watching this at some point like how can we help accelerate this version of a behavior analysis does that make sense yeah yeah well what's I mean, needed i i mean i it, it's it was why you know I, that was my favorite part of that um i i mean i it's really nice to me that jack mar thinks well of me you know i mean uh, jack was you know much senior to me, you know, and, you know, I'm really susceptible to a pat on the head, you know. So was, it was like really nice when I got a pat on the head from Jack. Was, was Jack the, on the important. other, sorry, for, was Jack on the, Jack on the other side of the, the theory war in the early 90s? <laughs> oh, Jack, uh, yeah, Jack's like an arc, arch mechanist. Okay. Uh, you know, he was, he was like the pro mechanist, yeah, you know, perspective yeah. uh, back in the theory and philosophy wars. So, but, but he's, he's an intellectual, you know, I mean, he's, he is a, a, mm -hmm. a, a guy of really considerable depth, but the, the heartening thing about that uh, conference was the youngsters and they want a big, rich behavior analysis. Um, and, and I think that, that it, it, it is on y'all, you know, to, um, insist on it. Um, and there are some people who are sort of like, well, this can't come in until it meets, you know, my personal arbitrary bar of empirical evidence, but that's just bullshit. You know, that is not how behavior analysis was born. It's not how it was born. Skinner was down in the lab, you know, building stuff and, you know, pulling it this way and pushing it that way. He was trying to do something that people said, you can't do psychology that way. So your discipline was born in a lab that was doing it the way that you weren't supposed to do it. So, you know, uh, like read Skinner. Skinner has a wonderful essay called A Case History uh, on scientific method, I think it's called something like that. It's in one of his collections of essays from um, early seventies, I believe. But I mean, he wrote it quite a bit before that. But he talks about what he was doing in the lab, and it doesn't look anything like we formed a hypothesis or you know we did an ABA you know uh, multiple baseline across. It was nothing like that. He was just like getting interested in stuff and then like you get in you drop everything and get in and really get into that. That's actually one of his principles of scientific method is he says, if you ever find anything interesting, uh, drop everything and, and, you know, chase it, you know? So this is the founder of your science who's saying this, you know? So, I, I, you know, like the guys who were trying to boo me off the stage, you know, I'm just trying to do what Skinner told me to do. I mean, it's, you know, not what some latter day, you know, whatever, you know, somebody who spent 90% of their career. I, I, I saw an interview that Ryan did a while back that was so controversial. It only stayed online for about a week and then was pulled off. Um, but uh, it is back up. But yeah, it was. Yeah, Go ahead, give that one a listen. And, you know, like, oh, you know, like behavior analysis already had all this solved, like depression and everything. Like, really? Really? Is that right? I mean, Charlie Furster wrote a couple of papers in the early 60s. I'm pretty sure that does not account, <laughs> even on the terms of that narrow argument for like problem solved in clinical psychology, you know? I mean, we've got work to do. And I would say, you know, like how to accelerate this is insist on, you know, approaching the people who you're serving as full human beings and demanding that your discipline address those things. It's so sad. You actually can find people who run applied behavior analysis shops but then when they get to stuff that's outside of like discrete trial training, you know, they're like reaching into these areas of psychology that are like truly like mentalistic uh, personality psychology. Oh my God. Which, you know, you can do better than that. So, you know, insist on it.
think of your clients in those ways. And if you don't have ways of, of addressing those inside of your training, then fatten your training up, mm -hmm. you, know, you know? Think what you'd look for. You know, there's a very, there's a guy I follow on Twitter who, uh, he's, a, he's a psychoanalyst, right? But he loves to point at uh, this one, uh, and it was a paper that was done years and years back where they surveyed behavior therapists and asked them if they had problems, what kind of a therapist that they would go to. And they didn't pick behavior therapists. Uh, now that, that's an old, that was an old study done, you know, a long time back. I'd like to think that there are a few of them that would say I'd get an, a good act therapist or something like that at this point in time. But they were pointing at something that was real. And that was that the discipline was too narrow. Our behavior therapy was too narrow. And I don't mean too narrow by like too narrow in the view of the people who were practicing uh, uh, you know, that behavior therapy themselves. Like if it's too narrow for you, then it's too narrow for your clients. You know, if you can't find what is relevant to you and the things that are hardest for you in your own life to live, then it's too narrow for them. You know, that's, that's the way to take measure of it. If it, if, it, if it doesn't apply fully to the real things in your life and the lives of people around you, well, to hell with that. It reminds me of a discussion I was having with Michael Maloney, educational uh, background, behavior analyst in the educational realm, uh, lives up in Canada. And he was saying uh, one of his important I would say, I'm trying to recall, make sure I speak correctly on this since it's his words. Like one of the distinguishing factors of a behavior analyst is someone who can also work with their own behavior. Like he was almost saying that that was a, a prerequisite. Is, is that how, do you feel in similar ways in any way? Like I've, I struggle with this sometimes because thinking about, like you can have knowledge, skills, and abilities that you can't physically perform for some reason that can really help somebody else out, right? But also there's these weird lines sometimes. Like I was thinking about if I had children, um, where I'd start to draw those lines. And there's some things that I would shift, right? <laughs> like I would say, I would want to see that experience. I know we, we've experienced that as behavior analysts too. Almost everybody's ran into at some point. Um, a client, usually the one is, you know, you, do you have kids? No, I don't. How are you going to help me and understand this? But there's other situations there. So I don't know. Does that bring up anything? Well, I mean, I don't think you have to, I mean, you don't have to have, I mean, Pat Fryman says all the time, I don't know anything about being a parent. He know, you know, he doesn't have any children, never has had any children. Mm -hmm. He knows about behavioral principles though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So I, I don't think that it's true that, um, you know, you have to have the direct experience that people are having. Like I understand behavioral principles and I under, and I have uh, practiced for many years applying those to a crazy broad array of, you know, different kinds of um, uh, circumstances and contents. Um, and the broader your practice is with the application of principles, um, guess what? the broader your practice is, mm -hmm. you know, the broader your ability to practice is. So if you practice behavioral principles, but only in a very narrow range, you'll bump into that all the time, you know, where you just can't even imagine how to mm -hmm. uh, apply them in that setting. So, I mean, the way to increase range is to increase range. Is a, <laughs> yeah. Is a, is a function of that, like, I guess the perspective taking component too, like, does that help accelerate maybe the ability to effectively? Um, I, I, I think uh, that perspective taking is a central tool that I use in kind of understanding contingencies from the inside out with someone who's in a different circumstance than 
I've ever been in before. So if it's somebody and it's a, has a lot of, there's a lot of resemblance between that circumstance and my own. Sometimes I can, it's, it's not that hard to uh, imagine, but a central tool for me is a kind of an inquiry that I'm going to do with someone where I try to get them to help me see their world from the inside out, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm, and I really want to know like, the taste, the touch, the smell of it. Um, it, That buys you a couple of things when you're working uh, with something. One is it's quite an extraordinary thing to have another human being who you've come to for help be that interested in you and your experience. As as a matter of fact, it's pretty uh, amazing to encounter that anywhere in life, to have somebody really profoundly interested in the kind of grit and grain of your experience. Um, Much more frequently people just come in, you know, riding high and presuming to have the answers to your problem before they even, you know, you even get a word out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, A couple of things it will do is that if you really inquire into this, and to try to take their perspective and kind of echo their perspective. Like, am I hearing you right? Is it like afraid? Is it like this place where you find yourself hesitating and, and to be willing to sit there and have a person kind of coach you through seeing the middle of that experience? Sometimes they can transmit to you how stuck they feel. And so, you know, when you start to ask them to do things, um, you know, when you start, you know, generating like behavioral activation targets or things like that, you, you generate them from a place of um, really considered empathy, you know, from like sitting in the midst of their experience in as much as you're able. Just to have tried means a lot to people uh, and will tend to... Uh, soften and make more sensible the kinds of things that you ask of them.